So let's see if we can find the inverse for uh, something like this. f of x equals 3x plus 8. Did we do that last time? We did? All right. Now, if you remember the steps we took to do that last time, we replaced the f of x with y. We swap the x's and y's, we solve for y. Because when we switch the x's and y's, we're then looking at the inverse. I even changed the color of my pen. But actually, I want to do this. If we look at what we're doing with our function f, I'm starting with x, but I want you to tell me the order of operations. What am I doing with every x that gets plugged into this function? What does this function do with every input value? What is the order of operations? What's the first thing it does? Multiplication. So the first thing that it does is it multiplies times 3, and then it does what? It adds 8. It adds 8. Those are the steps that we would take based on the order of operations. Do you all agree? The inverse function undoes everything. You guys with me? It's going to undo everything. So I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to write it backwards. I'm going to say, here's my f inverse with that negative 1 thing. Okay. So if I start with x, I want you to tell me how I undo these guys. You have to go backwards here. So you have to subtract 8, and then you would have to do what? You would divide the whole thing by 3. So I want you to see what this means when I write this using my notation for inverse function. So it means f inverse of x is equal to, what do I do with every x? Watch the arrows. I subtract 8 and then I do what? <coughs> Divide the whole thing by 3. And if you look at what we did last time, you're going to see this exact same answer that we had. Does this always work? No. It does not always work. But sometimes it does, and when it does, it makes things very, very nice. Uh, for example, if so I give you... This is different than manipulating it as a linear equation because on a linear it would be negative 8 thirds equals x, right? Or no, no. y in there. The way that so we... So we're staying on the same side of the equal sign. Yeah. The, the way we did it last time is that we swapped the x's and y's and we had to solve for y. We did that like four steps. It was, yeah, the little, little four-step thing. But this one right here, if things are simple enough, I don't have to go through all those hoops. What I'm saying here is that if I can see what this function is doing, then I'm going to undo that piece by piece. If you have kids, you know what this is like. You pick up things, and you put things away nicely and neatly, and then they undo it, right? And don't you do things like backwards the way you, like whenever I get dressed, I put on socks and then shoes. However, when I get undressed, I take off the last thing that I put on, right? I take off the shoes, then I take off the socks, right? That's kind of what the inverse function will do. So if I look at this guy right here, f of x equals negative 5x plus 7 all divided by 4. This is simple enough that I can identify each step in my order of operations. So I'm starting with x, and what's the first thing that I do once I plug x into this function? I'm multiplying this guy times negative 5. After I multiply it times negative 5, what's done in the function? You add 7, and then finally you do what? You divide everything by 4. That is what your original function says to do. With every input value here, you multiply it times negative 5, add 7 to that result, and then divide by 4. Well, let's look and see what my inverse function would do if I go backwards here. So my inverse function is going to start with x undo everything. Well, the last thing that was done was dividing by 4, so what's the first thing I'm going to do for the inverse? I'm going to multiply <coughs> times 4, and then I'm going to do what? Subtract 7. Subtract 7, then divide by negative 5. So I'm just kind of going backwards on that. So when I write my inverse function, 
what am I going to do with my x first? Watch the arrows. I'm going to multiply times 4, so what does that mean? That's 4x minus 7, minus seven over the whole thing is divided by negative 5. Now, if you're not quite sure how I did that, you can always go and do it the other way, where I take my original function and I rewrite this to say y equals negative 5x plus 7 divided by 4 and then rewrite the y's to be x's and x's to be y, so it would be this, x equals negative 5y plus 7 over 4. If you solve this expression for y, you're going to get this exact same thing. You solve this guy here in pink for y, you will get this guy. Uh, a little bit of both. You can't do this with everything. Right. But things that are easy enough like this, hey, go for it. Save yourself the time. 